Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. First video of 2020. I did intend to get out a lot sooner, but if you remember my last video, I was with Monts and we did some hiking, did some camping in the wilderness in a, in a remote cabin. It was about minus 16 while we were hiking and then at night it dropped below minus 20. The plastic components on the tripod just had enough really and they just completely blew apart. So I've been waiting for a new tripod which arrived yesterday. So I'm, I'm back out filming today, which is nice actually, nice to bring the camera with me again. And I've just been doing a little bit of hiking today, a bit of exploring and driving around as well. And I brought my pack with me. And on top of the pack, you can see that big monstrosity there. That's a, a new sleep system that I've acquired off of a friend of mine, which I'll go into a bit more detail later. But I was going to show you that sleep system in this video and how it goes together with my bivy bag and my sleep mat, just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be sleeping in in the videos to come when I'm out doing solo camps over the winter. You might remember I did a kit video at the end of last autumn and the kit hasn't changed. It's the same setup. The only thing that really changes is my clothes, the amount of food I carry on me and my sleep system. And in this video, we're going to go over my sleep system. So uh, enough yammering. Let's get into it. Inside the pack here, um, you can see I've just got my jacket. This is just for weighing fish, but we're going to use that to weigh the pack and the sleep bag later. This is a, a winter jacket that I've got. I showed this in the last video, which you'll find in the description. And you can see I don't really carry much else in the pack. There's a dry bag there, which I would use for a clothing and, and scenarios where I'm worried about specific things getting wet that are important to me, like clothing basically. But in the bottom there, we've got my Dutch Army bivy bag with um, the Thermarest all season sleep mat in, which um, goes down to extremely cold temps and it's what I generally use all year round. I've, I've shown it in previous videos and my setup and hopefully if you've watched the channel, you've seen me camping it in, in various temperatures and it's, it's something I really rate quite highly. But other than that, you can see nothing really in the pack. Um, so lots of room. And I don't carry my tarp in the winter. Um, you'll notice that normally goes at the bottom of the pack here. I have a tarp all in a DD 3x3 tarp. Um, all ridge line, everything kind of set up in that quick deployment setup we looked at in videos in the past. So um, that's not there. And, and the nice thing about that is then if I do need to put a lot more stuff inside my pack, you know, I can obviously roll this jacket up in a much better way than this and have that strapped at the bottom there. And I've saved a lot more room inside the pack because I've just got this in there. So it's a pretty modular setup. And um, even though the bag itself is, is just really like a, a sort of 40 litre bag minus the side pouches, you still have a great deal of flexibility with a frame pack like this or, or any other pack really if, if it's got straps and things to allow you to connect things to the outside and it's able to hold those things quite firmly to itself so they're not flopping around everywhere when you're walking and kind of messing with your with your pace so uh, so far so good but let's get all this opened up you've seen the bivy bag before but you know because this is a sleep system video i'll cover it again it's a, a dutch army bivy i got this one unissued off ebay um quite a nice bivy bag really it opens from the front with a zip, which is one reason I really liked it, and it goes down pretty far, so about just above your knee area, and um, allows you to open it right up, put your bag in, put the mat in, it's, it's comfortable. It's thick, it's very waterproof. It is pretty heavy though, we'll weigh it in a bit, I've never weighed it before. I'm guessing it's about sort of a kilo and a half with the sleep mat, but um, we'll check. But underneath you've got these bits here, and that's I guess to allow you to stuff a sleep mat in, like a foam sleep mat. I have used the Dutch Army sleep mat and, um, you know, it's quite bulky, like a lot of military equipment. I don't use these, but, you know, they do help in kind of the, the toughness of the whole thing. You've got a bit of Velcro here as well. So when you swing the tab over, like the storm flap, it covers the zip. Um, I've not had any issues in the rain with, with rain getting into the actual bivy area that is one thing that i was concerned about when i looked at the design um it, i thought maybe it's quite easy if you're in a horrible windy condition for this to open a bit and water to, to get in there and uh I, I haven't had any issues but but i i think it is a possibility if i'm honest with you 
um, but you've got the Thermarest Neo Air. Um, this is the um, all season, and I think it has a 4.5 R rating, so it should be pretty good down to some really, really extreme minus conditions. And it's supposed to be like an all season mat, um, and it's got absolutely dozens of tiny little air baffles in. It only weighs 19 ounces, which is um, pretty impressive for something like this. As a foundation for a sleep system, it is almost a jack of all trades. I think the best the best bit about this bit here is the sleep mat, the Thermares sleep mat. I've got to say, I'm really, really happy with that, but it was extremely expensive. And in this country here, it covers me for winter, it covers me for spring, and it covers me for autumn. It does not cover me for summer. Back in the UK, it covered me all year round, and this is the way I like to roll. But back home, it's a bit different. Here, the bugs, the ants, the flies, the insects here in, um, in, in Sweden in the summertime are very different to what I experienced back in the UK. If you like ants, then this setup is great here in the summer. But I think something better to run with um, in the summer here in Sweden is a hammock with a big mozzie net all around it and preferably even then a secondary net on the hammock itself. Um, and, and that is the way to run with in the summer here, in, in my opinion. I think that's the best thing to do. And that's what I'll be doing this year. And I've got that gear set up now and I'm going to be trying that out in the summer. So we'll see how that goes. But rest of the year, this setup's great. So um, let's get the bag anyway, and I'll open that up. So you can see the sleep bag's pretty bulky. It's a, a Dutch sleep system, a Dutch modular army Arctic sleep system. And it actually goes with this bivy bag, so it zips down the middle as well, so the whole system can open up pretty easily. And, and that's, I was pretty lucky really to get hold of this. A friend of mine has actually given this to me as a gift, um, a guy up in real north of Sweden, up near Jokmok, and, uh ex-military himself and, and obviously um, Dutch and, and didn't use this piece of equipment much at all. Um, just had it kind of lying around and didn't really want it. So he came came down to uh, visit me as a surprise visit and gave it to me as a gift. So uh, I was really lucky to get hold of this. And, and Harold, if you're out there watching, thanks so much, mate, for giving this to me. It's really given me the opportunity to get out in this kind of winter here this year and do some camping as last year I had real cabin fever. I couldn't do any camping apart from in my rooftop tent, which is which is not quite the same. It is synthetic, so it will dry really well, but as a result, it's a lot bigger. Flap that up, and then we can chuck that down there like that. So a pretty good match for the bivy bag, and the outer bag here has a zip all the way down to the foot area. Um, even in this temperature now we're in today, like minus 13, I'd probably use both bags. I wouldn't just use the outer bag. I'd probably find yourself to be a, a little bit cool for me because I tend to feel the cold. Um, you've got a zip at the bottom there and um, you can obviously then access inside the bag. This is the inner bag that's in there at the moment, which connects to the outer bag. The zips seem really good quality. Um, they're not YKK, but they've got some other kind of design on them, but they're pretty chunky. And you obviously have some Velcro here for the storm flat. Some toggles so you can tighten this hole and cinch it down. You can make it really, really small if need be, but obviously it's good to make sure either you're like your nose or your mouth and the breath is, is coming out of here and not you're not sort of making all of this really, really damp. But uh, at the end of the day, it's about staying warm, really. But it's good to have a zip at the top and the bottom. Uh, just you can open the whole bag and, and jump in and if we open that up you'll see this is like the inner bag and you can see it actually connects with tabs to the outer bag so it doesn't end up getting all uh, sort of mixed up in there when you try to open it up but unlike the outer bag this one doesn't open out the middle it opens at the side and I guess the idea is to create like a layering baffle so you don't just have all of your heat escaping out of the zip area and potentially a bit of draft coming in. But this is the uh, the summer bag, I guess. And uh, the summer bag, again, I, I really like the design of it. You've got some poppers at the front there. And if we open those up, you can see you get a mozzie net. So it's kind of like a jungle bag in a way. But the mozzie net can come over the top there and it actually zips 
So this small zip along the back there. So in the summer, that should prove to be really, really valuable. But being this is Sweden and you have a extremely small fly called Sven. Um, I probably said that incorrectly, but I think they won't be able to get through that, you know, because that looks like a really fine mesh, finer than any other mesh I've seen really on a bag. So that would be worth trying out and that would be a painful night if it doesn't work. Does the bag stuff away easily? That's always a, an important factor, isn't it? Nothing worse than getting a setup, taking it out, and then you can never put it back the same ever again. It happens quite a lot. But uh, even with such a monstrously fat bag, it seems to be going away okay. go. I normally put this away by folding it like this and then layering that over a bit at that end. And obviously you have to deflate the uh, the mat first and what you do is you pull the, the baffle out the mat so it's kind of hanging out like a tongue and that will let a lot of the air out. And then just roll it up. You can see there's even still some, some air in the bag and I haven't even really done anything to it. But you can just pull that thing out there, close it off and pop it back in. You can be pretty rough with that actually, you don't have to be too delicate with it in terms of the, the tongue on the bag and uh, yeah it's good. Weight's always a big factor with with equipment. I mean, I get ridiculed still on a on a daily basis for using the LK. I'm always seeing comments and messages from people saying, "What on earth is that horrendous pack? That must weigh a ton." But I think empty in the last video when we weighed it, it was two kilograms, which I think is pretty good. And basically, without the sleep equipment in now. No food, no water, by the way. So just tools like all the axes and all that kind of stuff. We're at 6.1 kilos. So it's not too bad. Um, so I'd weigh the bivy and the sleep mat. So what are we looking at? Exactly two kilograms, just under, but we'll call it two kilos. And obviously we did weigh this. So yeah, 2.5 kilos. So you know, all, all in all, that's not really a massively uh, heavy setup in that respect. Uh, when we add water to that, that's obviously when you really start to see the weight increase. But we could add a lot of food to that. We could put more insulation in there, and that's a pretty, a pretty manageable setup for someone with an average level of fitness to carry um, to go out and do an overnighter or even multiple overnighters. So um, it's not, it's not really, in my opinion what I think is a heavy setup. Um, I don't worry about weight too much and despite the ridicule I get for, for this backpack, um, it, it makes up for it in, in the way it, it supports everything and the way it feels and the way it carries. I can't explain it. I know a lot of other people out there use this pack and they say the same thing as me. And when you put an aluminium frame on it, it really makes a massive difference to, to the weight of the pack. The, the steel frame it comes with is, is very heavy, very strong, but very heavy. So that's the new sleep system and how it works with the with the pack and obviously the existing bivy and sleep mat and uh, I think it's quite a nice system really. In terms of the temperatures it can handle, you have to remember that with military equipment like that it, it, it's often designed for a soldier in, in arctic clothing, in arctic equipment inside the bag, you know with boots on, um, you know to withstand those extreme temperatures. So going into a bag like that in, in minus 10 and, and just wearing some thermals and things you'll probably be okay but 
when you start to get into like minus 20 and then and then down into the 20s and approaching 30 um you know i think you really need some serious equipment not not just for when you're out camping but when you're in the bag too because uh you know the, the extremities really suffer um in those kind of conditions especially with wind chill wind chill is is a is quite quite a game changer actually and uh you know it makes a huge difference we have no wind at all today so I'm pretty lucky but if it was windy up here minus sort of 12 13 like it is now it would be you know my face here would start to go you know start to get really cold and uh you, know, you really want to get out of the wind and you know a bivy bag does help with that of course when you're when you're sleeping on the ground but um i hope you enjoyed the video i mean i can't come into this video as like a reviewer and say i've i've been in that bag in in this temperature and that temperature as i say i camped in it um in the cabin with Monts. i did an overnight with a mate just before christmas and uh you know it was about minus two so really mild and i was really warm in the bag and shedding layers and stuff better to be too warm though than than than, uh, than too cold um, when you're testing something like that and it's supposed to do cold temperatures you know it's not a good sign if you were cold and minus two in that bag but uh, i'm looking forward to getting out next week um hopefully around minus eight to ten and uh not sure where i'm going to go in the last video i did some ice fishing on a lake and i know there's another lake about two kilometers further on and um it's a bit deeper and i, I might head to that lake do some ice fishing do some camping cook some fish over the fire just kind of chill just just me really on my own um Monts is uh unable to come with me really on a lot of these trips now he, he's just too cold even with the jacket we've bought him he's still too cold i see him shivering you know he's sort of there curled up and you know he's sort of trembling you know so he, he's just not built for this kind of weather and that's, that's a fact even even with the saint bernards in him he's not built for that kind of weather um yeah, you know, so it's just a shame. In the cabin, it was fine before Christmas, even though it was like minus 25 outside. It didn't matter because I kept the cabin really warm. I got up every two hours. I put wood on the fire, made sure Monts was warm. You know, it was like eight to 10 degrees in the cabin. He's fine with that. That's a nice temperature for him. But um, yeah, he can't handle sleeping outside like this time of year. So I'm just on my own, but I will be in earshot of my car because um, obviously with Meg being heavily pregnant, I'm not going to be too far from home, but if I need to get back to the car in a hurry and get home. So, uh, you know, I can't just trek off into the wilderness, you know, at, at this time of, of, of our life. But I still get out, which is nice, and she still encourages me. You know, Meg's lush. She, she's always telling me to get out. So um, she's probably living vicariously through me at the moment because she can't get out and do this kind of stuff. You know, her hips just can't hack it. But I hope you enjoy this video enough nattering and uh thanks for watching and uh stay tuned for more videos and i'll see you very soon in the future and thanks again harold for the bag i really appreciate it take care